right, folks, first thing I want to show you is examples of projects I've used to slurry on and how it smoothed up my prints. Second thing I want to show you is the process of putting the slurry on side by side. And then I'm going to show you how I mix the slurry, how it's made at the end of the video. So feel free to skip to the points on the screen so you can know exactly where to go to see how it's made, how I use it and projects I've done. So let's jump into the projects I've done. So this is the Predator I used to slurry on. I use a decent amount, use some paint primer and then finish it up. Same thing with the Ryu, exact same process. Smooth, no layer lines. And then with my Silver Surfer, the exact same process. Links to these four videos we put in the description below. These are just examples of how I can remove the layer lines using the slurry and my primer and some sanding. Some cases I don't use sanding. So if you look closely to the right side, that's right under the microscope so you can see the layer lines filling in and disappearing. And now I'm using a thinner version of it to show you guys. In some cases you don't need it as thick. And I keep different levels of thickness on hand, usually four different levels of thickness, and I choose which one based on the project. And if I put on something that's a little too thick, I'll just dip it in just pure acetone and wipe it over the slurry I've already put, put in place. If you look to the right, you can definitely see the lines filled in. Now, I'm gonna give you guys an example of when I sand down the layer lines, I use precision files, and then after I have precision files, I just use different grit sandpaper up to the finest grit, and then the same process, putting the slurry over it and that'll fill in the rest of the layer lines. When you use primer, whether it's airbrush primer or primer filler sealer, that helps fill, fill in any gaps that you may have missed. I prefer the primer filler sealer. It does make a big difference, but sometimes it will you'll lose some detail. Just like with the slurry, you're gonna lose some detail. So you have to kind of choose what projects you wanna use this on. Because it, like I said, it does take away some of the detail in your prints and depends on how much you layer it on there. Right now I'm actually layering this on pretty thick. I don't always go this thick, but I just want to show you guys how I can layer it on thick and then how you can use pure acetone to dissolve it down some. And this stuff dries really fast. So you have a, you, you don't have a huge working window, but if you, um, you can always fix most of your mistakes just with the pure acetone. And you can get the 100% acetone from the Dollar Tree. I buy it from Dollar Tree all the time. It works just as good as any other acetone I purchased. I purchased it from a beauty supply store, I purchased acetone from a hardware store, and I purchased it from the Dollar Tree, and I've gotten the same results, no different. Now this is just me putting um, my airbrush primer on it. And even like I said, just with airbrush primer, it makes a big difference as well. It'll fill in some of the, the, the fuel holes and stuff you miss. And paint does the same thing. Like if you see there, if there's any areas that are missed, paint kind of helps fill in a few of those too. So it's all just layering up. And though there's just the process of layering up removes a lot of the layer lines for me. Now I know there's a lot of other tricks and stuff out there, but this is what I use when I paint my models. Because to me, it's the fastest method. It is the cheapest method. And it's the method I've gotten the best results from. And a lot of methods are just, the fumes are just too intense. I've used Bondo, Miyama's plastic filler. Now, Miyama is way less intense as like Bondo. Bondo, you definitely have to do it outside. You have to work with it outside with the mask. Um, Miyama is more like, it kind of smells like a nail salon or something. It's not super strong and it helps fill in gaps and um, some some layer lines and a sandable. But I only use those, I use, only use those for really big gaps. Everything else, just basic prints. If it's not a huge gap or it's not a damp, any type of damage to the print, I just use this process. I use the, the slurry with some primer, whether it's my airbrush primer or primer filler sealer out of a Rust-Oleum can, and then I paint over it. I prefer not to use anything that I have to step out of my, my studio to do. So I usually stick to paint, the airbrush primer, and a slurry. So to make the slurry, you can I usually use remnants of a roll that aren't enough to finish really too many prints. And I use scraps from previous prints, as you'll see here. 
like I said, this the Swan Nail uh, Polish Remover. Make sure you get 100% acetone. Do not get the other stuff. It has to say 100% acetone because they carry about four or five different ones. Just look for 100% acetone and you'll be good to go. Now just use it, chop it up in pieces, including like the, the remnant and the scraps, and I tuck it in the bottle. This is the results after about 15 minutes already. It's starting to dissolve, and I leave it overnight, and I add more as needed. And I do different consistencies, like milk, mustard, molasses, whatever you want to say. The consistency is different for each one. And then pure acetone when I want to mix it. I just want to kind of show you guys side by side how it pours out and the thickness of it. And, of course, the thicker you want it, the more plastic you have to add. So the more scraps and the more filament you have to add. And the stuff dries really fast, depending on thickness. The thinner it is, the slower it dries. The thicker it is, the faster it dries. I'm just going to spread this over the entire um, tray so you guys can actually see how it fills in the cracks with the tray. And it easily, it can just peel right up and you'll see how it peels up. But it just becomes another sheet of plastic, and that's how it fills in a layer. It's just dissolved plastic. Once the acetone evaporates, it just becomes the plastic again. That's how it fills in those gaps. And I'm going to zoom in so you guys can actually see how we picked up the characteristics of the, of the tray by filling in the gaps of the tray. Let me look really close here. Like I said, it just becomes like a thin film of plastic. You can put multiple layers on there, and it fills in those layer lines. You can like watch me tear it here, and you can go as thick as you want. All right, folks, that is all for this video. This is just a quick video to show you guys how I fill in all the layer lines on my prints. If you guys have any more questions, please put them in the comments below. Please continue to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.